the kill zone here um, alongside Cruiser. Cruiser will be the, our main presenter. Well, besides me, I will, you know, I am just bringing you the little introduction here to today's broadcast with Cruiser. Welcome, guys. Cruiser. Right. Cruiser is, you know, he's one of the, well, I should say one of the top ADC, is it AD carries yeah. in League of Legends. In the, uh, well, in this Caribbean, in our, in our um, geographical location, which is the Caribbean. Yeah. You know, so um, today this will be bringing you some uh, pro tips, you know, just to give you some one-on-one -on -one coaching if you need it. Uh, Cruiser, you know, he will be giving you all the little insights and all the little details as to where when and how to go about setting up yourself in league of legends you know mikey might touch on one or two topics today and we will be taking it away from here cruiser you take it away cruiser all right welcome guys as from Caston said i'm cruiser one of the top ad carries in the region my highest rank in league has so far been diamond 2 um, the highest position then on the rank ladder I've had so far was about the top 3,500 in North America. And that was last season, which was season 9. And this season, I'm um, also Diamond 2. Yet to break the higher seasons, but I'm trying to do that this season. And here today, I'm going to bring you guys some, you know, some little tips and tricks. Show you all how to award, um certain things some of the lower rank players may not be doing and that should help you also further your skill and your placement in your rank ladder for League of Legends, right? So here we go, we're gonna go into our practice tool and I'm just gonna show you all a little tips and tricks and I'll just guide you all along the way, right? Alright. So here we're gonna go into our practice tool. Well, as you all know, I mean AD carry. So, let's just say yeah, I'll pick pick some Caitlyn. Don't worry, guys. I am still here. I am here in the background, you know. I will be his punching bag for today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know, just tagging along to give you... He will mostly be telling me what to do and how to go about doing it. So, so we have the we have the, the the whole setup here of the the, the pro and the noob, you know. <laughs> so, um, guess what? Would you like to for me to bring up a camera on this? See some facial reactions, or you could just um, like this. Yeah, you could bring it up. Bring it up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Actually, I know why. We'll just, we'll just keep in the background for now. Alright, no problem. Alright. So that's gonna max out my skills here. So, one of, one of the biggest things that I noticed that a lot of lower ELO players do. So in lane and stuff, one of the basic things is clicking. Clicking is, yeah, that's one of the most simple things, right? But it could also make a big difference on what rank you are in the game and just how your gameplay is game by game right so we're gonna put some practice dummies here one dummy two dummy and we're gonna disable minions so some of the lower elo players so like keston mm -hmm. so we see some of the players when they click in, they click pretty spaced out, right? So this is a trend you will tend to see from a lot of the lower elo players. Their click in is like mostly spaced out. But when you're playing against like skill shot champs, like let's say Azriel, Azriel for example, Azriel kit is surrounded, I can get his mostly skill shots. So when you're just clicking so far apart, it makes it pretty easy for the opponent to land skill shots on you, right? So, one of the attributes of higher skill players, one thing they do frequently, especially in lane phase, 
you will see them do something called a wiggle. And the wiggle is when you basically click really close to your champ like this, right? And what and what this does, it basically creates a it's like a mind game for the opponent. So like when you're wiggling like this, versus when you're just clicking and have long movements, it makes your champion movement easier to predict. So one thing you all could practice that would significantly improve you know one of the aspects of a gameplay i would say practice how you click lower the space in between where you click for your champion movements a good trick um let me enable tower so this is a little trick you could try toggle tower fire all right, well, there's supposed to be a, let's see. Yeah, there's usually supposed to be a range of like, the tower, the tower range, right? So when I walk in a tower range, oh wait, my settings is kind of off. Anyway, we'll just do a different trick. I can put two words down here. So what y'all can do, put two words down and in your free time, you can just go into a practice tool and you just want to practice clicking in between the two walls so this is one way you could just train yourself how to wiggle a lot more a lot better so you just want to click in between the two walls you just want to keep doing this over and over and hey yeah, you should see a significant improvement in like how you lane versus skill shot versus clicking far apart where your movement just looks way too predictable right so I'm going to show you all some important warden places, especially in the early game. So we'll start from bot lane. So like, from bot lane, it all depends on the matchup, it depends the jungle you're playing against. Before you continue, let me, um, let me interrupt you there. Um, so basically, the, the amount of, is in, the game actually, does this game actually record the movements per second? Um, no, I don't know. It doesn't. Oh, we got, I, I think that, is prob that was probably from a different game then. Alright, go ahead. Yeah. Well, like, there was something you was getting to, like, why you asked that? No, like, uh, in, in, I know, I think it's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure if it's probably Dota. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think it actually calculates the amount of clicks per second and these kind of stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure it's have websites that could uh, calculate it, but on the game itself, it doesn't actually give you a calculation oh okay so yeah like for instance bot laners right you know how your ward is gonna always change based on the game situation based on the champions you're playing against based on the advantages or disadvantages you face game by game because every matchup is different right so for example to start off with if you're playing bot lane and the enemy is the enemy is always pushing into you. Like, let's say you have a Caitlyn Zyra, which is a heavy wave clear lane. They will most their game plan is to push you into the tower and get an HP advantage and force you to miss CS under the tower while you know while you are under the tower trying to pick up those creeps, right? So one thing, if you don't have push advantage, placing a ward like this, like a pink ward, you would see a lot of low yellow players placing a ward like this. It's important to know when you can do the sword. If you're getting pushed in and then lane constantly, placing the sword while you're always on their tower is it makes no sense because all they do is push the lane and they just rotate and play the sword. If you have a lane that could stall the wave somewhere let's say in, in this area here, this is a position you should heavily contest, right? So when you put the ward here, you always wanna keep in mind can I contest this ward? If not, then it's a waste of a ward, right? So to replace that ward, you could probably just put you could just put a yellow ward. Or if you're always pushing in lane, you want to ward defensively because you won't get a chance to actually ward anywhere further out. So the only way a jungler could gank you if you're always shoved up in lane is either lane gank if the enemy laner has CC to set up the gank, or through mid side. So you you want to put a ward, a pink ward, preferably around here and this should be your support shop this is not really the ad carry shop but i'm showing you where decent wards should be placed right 
So let me show you all where you should ward when you have lane priority. Boom. All right. So let's say we're on the other side of the matchup. This is perfect. Minion is hitting. Minions are hitting the enemy tower right now, right? So right now the enemy should be collecting these minions under the tower. We clearly have no enemies just because this is practice tool. But your enemy should be collecting these minions right here. So what you do want to do one or two things. When you're under this tower, you're either going to be pressuring the enemy off of the seers by hitting them, for instance. You're hitting the tower, right? Enemies, you're either going to hit them, max range, as much focus you can get, you want to rotate between tower shots. But never step up too much where they could just capitalize and kill you. Now, this is where the warding gets important. When you could shove up your lane and bot lane, right? You mostly are good at warding spot. Again, this is mostly your support job. But you, a lot of the time, have to guide your support to make sure these wards are, are placed safely. So, here for example, this is a good warding spot. Pink ward. You can pink ward right here. Or you can just come right here, put a ward over this wall. Or you can also put it here. Depending on the safety and how the enemy team is reacting to you leaving your lane, coming toward the enemy jungle. Because if you're always shoving lane, it's it makes more sense. It's the right thing to do. You want to ward deeper in the enemy jungle because the earlier you see the enemy, the faster you can get a reaction to say, okay, I need to back off here or I need to recall. So you give them a less lesser chance of getting the ganko. And well, it depends on lane matchups. If you can make the ward somewhere around here or even on wolf pit, it varies on the safety. You know, you can have your wards anywhere around here. A lot of the times you won't have access to these this much wards. So the easiest and quickest ward is I would say here. Oh yeah. Alright. So I can show you all some warning check show I'm top lane now. Alright. So top lane is a bit it's a bit different when it comes to laning, right? When you're shoving the lane in top lane, you would want to find yourself again same concept you want to ward as deep as possible to give you as much information on where the jungler could be coming or where his next move could be right so right here if you're playing top lane and you have the advantage and you could constantly you know you're winning a matchup you can push this in it's gonna make no sense just warding like i mean this this is not a bad ward but wards like this where you can see his red buff or even wards like over here, where you can see his Krogs. If you're always on the tower here, would give you a lot more information and would be of higher value. When you place your wards, you want to make sure your wards get a lot of the value because a lot of players in low elo just, you know, they just toss away their wards and they don't realize the importance of vision that your wards could give, right? So we're going to flip the matchup. Let's say you're on the red side and you are winning this matchup and this let's just flip this how this whole lane look right you're playing on red side and this wave is coming on this side a lot of people they just consistently just push the lane hit hit the tower or whatever right so to prevent getting camped which a lot of people hate when you push a lane on the red side which is the side of the map Getting a ward here or ward on this buff is ideal. If you realize it's almost the same thing when you're on blue side, when you're here and you want to ward their blue buff because this is like the most, the easiest path for them to take to gank killing, right? So from top side, if you're playing on red side, you want to ward as deep as possible. And again, it depends on the safety and the accessibility you have to make this move. And if a laner is pushed into the enemy tower here, and you come for this ward, the likeliness of him leaving here to contest the you and the enemy jungler, trying try to get this ward, it's low. So, one or two things could happen. They could capitalize and kill you here, but at the same time, the enemy laner, if he's catching a wave underneath this tower, he's also going to dismiss all the experience hitting this tower, right? And, yeah. So let's, let's talk about for mid lane. So for mid lane is, is the hardest lane to ward in my opinion and a lot of people pros they would say the same. 
So because Midlane is in the center of the map and there's so much angles that the jungler could gang from, you mostly you, let's see. A ward by his raptor pit right here, this ward will get you a lot of value. Right? And usually when you see the jungler, like when you see his positioning on the map, let's say you ward here and you see the enemy jungler. This dummy, this is the enemy jungler. You never want to play lane and hog this side of the lane. You always want to play on the opposite side of the lane. So you can be hitting minions. Let's say this is a minion, for example. And you see the enemy jungler on this side or taking this cutter crab here. You never want to play on the side of the jungler. It's always safer to play on the opposite side of the lane. Vice versa for the next side. If you see the jungler on this side, you want to play to the left side of the lane, right? So if the jungler ganks you, you see the jungler coming out of this, this side of the lane. A lot of people think it's easier for you to just walk back to your tower straight through the lane, right? Well, no. Sometimes it can work, but the smarter decision is to just walk, run down the river. Because a jungler pathing from this side, it's going to take him much longer to catch you if you continue running this way. And you can either just run back to your tower or you can just run back to lane. Right? Um, when you see the, if you want a ward for the jungle on this side, you want to tend to put your ward like here. Or if you're playing against junglers that are like Zach, for example, that can gang from different angles, you want to have cheeky wards like here, for example, or yeah, mostly here and here. Right? Um, for the top side, there's not much more wards other than here and here. Again, you don't you don't want this ward is pretty important. If you ward, let's say on top of the bush or jungler, you won't see a jungler if he's ganking mid lane. If he passes through like if he holds this wall, he can just walk past the vision. Because the vision line for this ward is about right along here. So yeah, jung you have to be like really specific with how you ward because it can make a big difference. So this ward is gonna see like up to here is a slight chance unless the jungle is like Gragas. Not because he's fucked, but there's a slight chance he can just slide on this wall and still be able to sneak into a bush and kill in. Right, so that's that are some tips on how you should play based on the enemy jungler and warden. The most the best places you can get value out of your wards in lane, right? Alright. Let me disable minions. Alright, so all minions are dead. Let's see. Give me one second. Alright. So I'll show you all a little tip of leaning. So I'll give you all a little example of how you should lean with Caitlyn. Let me enable minion spawn. Alright, so, oh, I'll actually just, I'll go over a replay and show you guys, because it's better to go over a replay than just think off the bat, right? So, I'll open up a replay of a game and I'll give you all a little example of a coaching session. Let's call it a sample, right? So, we could review, we can review a game of mine, just because it's easier. easier. Let's see. Oh, I could, I could review a, a Loilo, someone on my friend list. Alright, let's review Ace. Ace, this is a Tobagonian AD carry player. Let, let's see how he plays League at the goal level. Let's see. Alright, um, Keston, anything you wanna say so far? Um, or well, was like, was it helpful? Yeah, yeah, well, definitely, definitely, it was helpful. I understood like some of it, not not everything, but what we, what did you understand so yeah, far? I, I, we'll 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 get there. So basically, what 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 I wanted to do was let's uh set up like. Uh, like a like a one on one, and 
let's see let let's see like some of some of your what like like how like live placement live placement of rewards you know in a match live placement yeah live placements you know like when the game like before the game starts how you how you will move and how you will how you will um over like do it in a real in a real situation you know so you want to set up a 1v1 yeah, one v one, and see. Let let's see how you will place up your wards and how you do it in a live situation. Not just explaining it in the, in the in the in the in the um, in the dummy mode, uh, as I will call it. Yeah. Let's see live placement and how we will, how we will how you will uh, do those things, that you just explained. So, did you invite? Oh, I invited me. Nice. All right. So the goal of the one v one, you just want to see what play placements, or you actually yeah, just want just the uh, as you, as we were talking about just okay. what placements and you know that and 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 that's basically it. Just just how you will set up the word placements in a live situation. I know you just explain it, but you know sometimes you might need a, a some people might understand it in a match situation. You yeah. Know? Well, it's it's still well. This is not a, not a full game, so it's kind of gonna almost be the same. But I have an idea. I'll show you something different. So again, guys, um, for the upcoming streams and videos, it it should be a bit more structured. Uh, what we're gonna bring to you, stream by stream. But this is just kind of like a wel like a welcoming the intro intro stream, so we just you know spreading a few tips and tricks in many varieties of the game. We are in. And we are here. Alright, so I'm just gonna buy buy some wards. Alright. So level one level one warding is it's pretty important. So sometimes a lot of people they just you know the generic ward would be like right here even though this word may not get any value based on how the enemy jungler is pathing in the game so some words that could give you the best information possible let's say you have a jungler like let's say the draft is in a way where the game is going to be played on the bottom side of the map you know like it looks like your jungler the enemy jungler his plan is not to gank top lane or anything, even though that's how it can happen. For example, putting a ward on this red buff, or even right here still, this ward on a rafter pit, or even if you're on the opposite side that the kill zone is on, a level one, a good level one ward would be right here. This ward could tell you if the enemy starts red red buff. And if he's going to do his raptors, and right after the raptor, as you can see, you're gonna see that he's going to path through the bush and go up to his top side. Especially if you're a bottom laner or a mid laner, this award will give you a lot of value. So you now see Gaston here in the mid lane. <laughs> Gaston, are you trying to, you trying to fight? <laughs> no, I, 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 I too scared. <laughs> ah, yes. People, I am not a pro League of Legends player. I most likely will 
fall to my demise in this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will man. contribute to my own demise in this game. I so, am by no means so a like, pro League of Legends player. I could explain this matchup just from playing it, even though I did not pick, like trying to play this matchup. So, the kill zone is playing Ash, right? My goal in this matchup as a me melee champion, not specifically Lee Sin, but I'm in melee champion. But I, I completely wasted the spell. You see? <laughs> and nice. there you are, I just, I just messed up you. So, my goal in this matchup is I'm at a disadvantage already. Like, the kill zone has range advantage from me, on me, so. The most I can do here is try to catch as much CS as I could while not trading much as my HP for the CS. So like Keston for example here, you should be auto attacking me as much as you can. Like you don't, you don't have to be scared right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is a matchup where you can abuse me as much as you can. Like right now. Hit, like you should be hitting me right under this hour. No, you're talking to the tower, bro! Hey, run, run. <laughs> no, the tower killed me. <laughs> yeah. So, like, in this matchup, the way how he pushes me into the tower, he has range advantage, poke advantage, CS advantage, basically. He has a full priority in this lane. It's gonna take me either to push this lane out so I can roam, or I'm just gonna be at a demise. So all right, before before we 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 know this this stream is gonna be pretty short. You know it'll just be like thirty minutes. So let's just uh just let's just go to where the ward placements are. Let's see where you set up the wards in the in the to start your game with this uh character that with this uh what what do you call them? Uh, Listen. Champions. Oh, champions. okay, okay. So, so many games with so many different things. Let's just see where the where you placed your wards and let's see where how uh, how the uh Alright, well see that is only a one v one game and there's nobody else in the game. So what I what I said at the beginning this ward this is this is one example of a ward, right? Crap, I don't wanna attack you. <laughs> All right, one, that is one ward. Keep it this us, bro. So we just we, we just have an idea where he placed the wards. So Alright, so this for example, right? Let's say you can just press S. Let's press S. Yeah. So this word also the same on the opposite side. Why you keep attacking? <laughs> right. So right where you're standing, I basically put the word right in the right in that area. And what I said earlier is that that word will. I can just put a pink word here, just so you can literally see it. So. In a normal game, this would not be up in quarter, right? But what this ward would, would tell me is that when I see the jungler passing... Let me just walk up. When I see the jungler passing from his blue side up to red side, this ward will tell me that he's either going to do this camp right here, or and it's going to indicate me that he's going to his red buff right after. So that's... That's already value for award placement, right? Mm -hmm. So, the kill zone come down to the bottom side now. You can just meet me, meet me in river, I'll show you where our next award placement is. Alright. So, let's say this is for, for you. Let's say I am we're changing the positions. I'm currently you, right? A ward right here mostly gets you a lot of value. Why? Because usually enemy starts red buff. And after that red buff, he's gonna either, depending on the jump, he's gonna clear this camp in front of me here, which we call a raptor pit. He's gonna clear this this camp, and the ward that I just placed in front of the camp is gonna tell me that he's doing this camp. And he's going to rotate from here to go up to his blue buff side. And again, that's already you're getting value out of your ward. So you know you just wanna put as much wards that can get you as much value in the game. 
because yeah when you waste your words it's yeah you can do a lot more with your words and knowing where to place your words you would probably you would escape a lot of gangs that if you knew how to put your words you know you wouldn't die to those gangs right so yeah like that, that's about it oh okay right guys and you know thanks for tuning in like i said it was a short live stream we will definitely be having more of this we will definitely be having more of this all you want to do is just switch back to the uh So back. Did you did you switch to to yeah. us? Yeah, I switched back. Okay. Uh, all right. So you know, definitely we'll have more of this with uh, probably more more explanations. You know, pro tips and more. And we'll, we will cover more, go more in depth in more in more strategies involved in this uh, the of Legends game, and. We will definitely have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's sometimes that is the whole point of a, of a video game. Sometimes you know, just to have fun, sit back, relax, and sometimes not take it all too serious. Yeah, <laughs> like like it or not, <laughs> some, some people sometimes you know. people tend to lose the fun in a game, yeah. but it's you could you could still have fun playing at a high level. You yeah. just once you have the knowledge. And you know how to wreck your opponents, then that that will eventually become the fun they are gonna have, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So we we want to thank the viewers for tuning in, and we will see you another time. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and hopefully in the future we have some coaching live coaching sessions that may come along. So you know, just stay updated, and you know, thanks you all, thank everyone for tuning in. All right. All right, everyone have a good day. Peace.